Hey, what's up, people? How you guys doing, man? It's Renal Colleagues, uh, Duran Dog Extreme. You know my video. Um, back with another video, especially here to talk about the Monday Night Raw late review 1000th episode. Uh, the Monday Night Raw way kicked off was awesome. I'm actually glad that it started off with Shawn Michaels saying we're missing something, and I thought it was gonna be something random and silly, but uh, apparently it turned out great. Triple H kind of spoiled it when he said, wasn't there more of us? And then they brought out more people. Billy Gunn, X-Pac, and Road Dog. I thought it was going to be just X-Pac and Road Dog, but I forgot Billy Gunn was also part of DX, which kicked it off awesome. I was actually marked out, too. I'm very excited that did happen. So that's where it started. And then uh, before that, we had Mr. McMahon thanking the WWE Universe for them reaching 1,000 episodes. I thought it was awesome, you know. Always uh, glad to the, um, thank the universe for being proud of us. So I was actually excited about that. But after that, we during the DX reunion, uh, uh, Damian Sandow came out to uh, confront them, say that the ignoramus for the last decade or so. And then basically, um, right when they were saying, but I got two words, I was kind of pissed off because Damian Sandow came out and erupted him. But luckily, DX got some uh, retribution on Davey Sandow and humiliated him when he said they have a plan. So, glad that worked out pretty well. So, after that, I thought it was awesome. After that, we had the six man tag team match. Raven Stigger and Sinkar are tag teaming. Two of the greatest high flyers that wear a mask. I have to say, Sinkar is the best because he hardly talks. He's probably like. Kane a little bit, where he shows no emotion and doesn't even talk, so that's the most ironic thing, and then if you really look at it, Rey Mysterio and Sinkara teaming in the ring, that was exciting, with Sheamus, well, with Sheamus, but Dolph Ziggler, Chris Jericho, who are teaming, even though they may start a feud with each other, I guess with Alberto Del Rio, I may see that, but hopefully Chris Jericho finally beats Dolph Ziggler, if they don't, I don't know what the writers are thinking. I don't know how Jericho could not be the guy. So, basically with Dolph Ziggler striking Chris Jericho's own tag team partner, which gives Sheamus, Rey Mysterio, and Carr the victory. So, that was very exciting. Alright, and after that, we had one of the most exciting parts. And, I don't know where to let that off, but... Yeah, so... Later that night, we have Brodus Clay fighting Jack Swagger, who is a jobber right now. Jack Swagger's been jobbing the last week. When will Jack Swagger get a freaking win? This is so ridiculous. And I feel embarrassed for Swagger not getting a victory. So, uh, apparently I'm just going to leave it from there. Jack Swagger, you know, loses Brodus Clay. DS with Dude Love, one of Mick Foley's alter egos, and which was apparently, which was pretty exciting to see. So, AJ and Layla, oh my gosh, Layla's looking prettier than ever. Uh, and, you know, it turned out AJ was talking to Layla instead of Caitlyn. Layla, the Divas champion, but where's her Divas title belt? So, she shared a word of advice with AJ. Basically, she's saying that AJ claiming that every... AJ saying to everyone that they're claiming that she's mentally unstable. And then Layla saying, no, this whole place is kind of unstable with segments with Hacksaw Jim Duggan walking down the hard way. R-Truth they Roddy Piper play jump rope with Lil' Jimmy. And May Young and Juicer's son, who was the guy with uh, wearing the mascot of the hand, which kind of is creeping me out a little bit. To be honest, it creeped me out. I wonder who's the guy that played the hand. I don't know if he'll be a wrestler, but it's probably one of the staff for the WWE. So, we had a segment where Triple H was doing uh, yoga with Trish Strauss. Oh my god, that's funny. The rest of the DX game was like. Looking at uh, Triple H dude yoga with Trish, which was so funny. Oh my gosh, I thought that was the funniest thing. But the segment with Layla, AJ, and the rest of the game was funny. Layla dancing was just so amazing. Glad to see her dance was just funny with her little Jimmy dance. And she knows little Jimmy. That's so amazing. Oh my gosh, her voice is just so charming. Which was just funny. So, after that moment, we had... Oh my gosh, the wedding! It was vice versa. I made a video saying that Daniel Bryan's going to humiliate AJ. It was the other way around. AJ said, no, I'm not saying yes to I want to wed Daniel Bryan. 
I said yes to another man who who made a proposal to me, which was giving Vince McMahon the position, gave, presented the Raw GM, which he looks like he was going to come out. It turned out it was AJ. How long will AJ be Raw GM? We never know. I thought it was awesome. So, it was just funny. Uh, Dave Wright gets humiliated and angry. I would have been angry, too. After that, duh, so that was just, oh my gosh, I knew they weren't going to successfully win, either way. But, it seemed like, oh my gosh, it seemed like AJ d decided not to win Bride, and he humiliated Daniel Bride, which was, I thought it was surprising. I was very surprised to see that happen. I was a little in shock in between. And I thought Daniel Bryan was going to successfully win AJ. Or will... Well, we never know what happened. So... She, she did went berserk and trash all the decorations. CM Punk comes out and confronts uh, Daniel Bryan, claiming that, yeah, he would have done the same thing if he was in his shoes. And so, basically, um, The Rock also comes out and says, oh, he's going to face the number one contender at the Royal Rumble in 2013. He'll face the WWE Championship, so Rock's automatically the number one contender at the Royal Rumble, which was what I'm really looking forward to coming this January. So, after that, we had um, Rock saying, oh, even though the Daniel Bryan's wedding didn't go successful, he gave him a wedding gift, which was the Rock Bottom. So, that's where he left it there. I kind of marked that when he did the Rock Bottom on Daniel Bryan. But the thing that I don't get, and I'm going to talk about it now, is why the interviewer interviewed Daniel Bryan, which was kind of dumb. He should have been interviewing John Cena or Punk, building up the main event. Like, why is the whole thing centered on Bryan if AJ's the new general manager, and he doesn't, she doesn't even appear in the rest of the show celebrating her new GM, and she disappears from that? That's what I totally don't get. And yeah, I, I had to scratch my head at that. That kind of pissed me off a little bit. But yeah, Bret Hart serving as guest ring announcer with the match between The Miz against Christian. Miz finally gets a win after Christian's knee injury, which built him success. So Miz finally getting back on track as the Intercontinental Champion. He was the United States Unified Tag Team Champion, WWE Champion, and now has the Intercontinental Champion. Miz finally getting back on track after jobbing for the last two months. So glad he's um, getting back on track. So, to see Miz get back up, he's glad he's in a new, a new role, so he's probably going to be feuding with Christian from now on, from then, from then on out. So, Charlie Sheen appeared on Skype earlier tonight, talked about some things, especially mainly in part, is ripping Daniel Bryan, and then Daniel Bryan exchanged words saying that, oh, I will put Daniel Bryan in the yes off last so he can say winning, and then, then Charlie Sheen challenged him to a match at SummerSlam. That's funny, but I don't think that's going to happen. Charlie Sheen's like 50. Daniel Bryan's like in his 30s. I don't think Charlie Sheen would fight, really, unless he's like in the best shape of his life, to be honest. So, that's what i say from there. And then, um, after that, Triple H decided to get down on some serious business. And then, um, from there, he tries to confront Brock Lesnar, call out Brock Lesnar, and have Brock Lesnar confront Triple H. But instead, Paul Heyman comes out, and he says no, and then talks trash about Triple H and his family, his children. Stephanie McMahon comes out, confronts Paul Heyman, saying, don't ever talk about my family. And then Paul Heyman goes on and trashes Stephanie McMahon, his father. And then Stephanie McMahon saying, oh, that Paul Heyman's children are going to be disappointed because he's a professional parasite. Slaps the taste out of Paul Heyman. And then embarrasses Paul Heyman, which frustrates him, saying that you got the match at SummerSlam with Brock Lesnar against... Triple H, which will happen at SummerSlam. I'm so excited about it. I thought Paul, Brock Lesnar was going to come out and set the challenge, especially how he beat up Triple H, apparently. So, from then on out, apparently, um, Paul Heyman talked trash about how he, Daddy's little girl always gets what he wants. And then Stephanie Man basically brutalizes Paul Heyman or out of frustration tackles him and then continues to slap her. I would have just straight out punched him if I was her. But yeah, that's where I go from there. So, um, yeah, that's what happened, which was just an awesome promo. It's good to see Triple H take care of serious business. After that, Lita BT Slater with help of the APA, and, um, with the help of the APA, Lita gets the win, and DDT, and she twists her face, Heath Slater, it does the moves all on Heath Slater. I felt embarrassed for Heath Slater, they're really propping him up, but he just only got one win against Dwayne the Clown, and Dallas Page comes out just to further embarrass Heath Slater, and, just to cover their tracks, which was really, I'm kind of, like, surprised to see, but best part about it, 
Um, Heath Slater um, gets embarrassed by Lita with help from the APA. So, good thing to see the APA re come return after uh, a long absence and JBL's retirement. So, excited to see that. So, glad JBL put his gimmick aside with JBL Farouk. And Farouk did that end promo with the D word. Dang! Excited. Undertaker returned, reunited with his brother Kane with the Brothers of Destruction. I really marked out about that. I was so excited to see that reunion taking down six people. Glad they didn't have a match. Glad they just clobbered down six men to send a message that they are in a reunion. I'm excited about that. That was just one of the best, the best reunions of the Brothers of Destruction. John Cena, you know, unsuccessfully wins Money in the Bank, which I knew was going to end in disqualification. I was kind of pissed off because I was so predictable. Big Show's going to get involved. I thought it was going to be a no-DQ match, but it turned out it didn't. They should have had a no-DQ match. And on top of that, it kind of made John Cena look naive that the Big Show was going to interfere in the match, which was kind of obvious that was going to happen. And then The Rock also got involved, saved John Cena from the Big Show. Cena put clothesline The Rock, and he owned, completely owned The Rock. I was surprised how Cena Punk completely owned him, and then nailed the go to split <laughs> and walked out. So, the commentators are showed size that Cena Punk made a heel turn, saying that he turned on the WWE Universe, saying the WWE Universe turned on him, but which was the other way around. So, I gotta say, everything on Monday Night Raw was good except the main event, which was Kind of the only thing excited was The Rock finally owning the Big Show. The Big Show's destruction just never ends, and then The Rock finally beats up the Big Show. So finally, somebody's got to put an end to this Big Show destruction thing. It's really com coming to drag a little bit, but it it's still doing well. But I have to say, um, other than that, still a good Monday Night Raw. I thought it was good, worth three hours, and I wish Eve appeared and confronted AJ about her position as GM, but that didn't happen. They didn't even have a Divas match. So, because you know it's just going to be more Layla and Beth Phoenix, which is going to be a drag. So, I'm not too surprised about that. But, they really need to do something with the Divas title belt sooner than later. But, other than that, the, the whole thing was just awesome. The 1000th episode, the new intro I really loved. I thought it was just really hits the roof. So, that's what I say from that. The Reverend Slick was just funny. He was a funny uh, reverend for the wedding, and other than that, we had, other than that, we had the DX reunion. All of it was great. 9 out of 10, Monday Night Raw. The main event was kind of pissed me off, because I knew it was going to be DQ. We could have seen him pull out a cheap win, or John Cena successfully getting the victory. He should have went from there, but it must be a winner. That's what they should have had, but other than that, they're going to have... Uh, CM Punk facing some John Cena for the WWE title at SummerSlam. Hopefully so that is to happen. So, that's where I go from there. So, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoy this video, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.